Welcome to Hobby with Ollie. My name's Ollie. And my name's Meg. So today we're going to be cracking the lid on the new Leagues of Votan army box and painting up Halfkin warriors from box to battlefield. So getting into yet another new army was very much driven by you, Megs, as when you saw the Votan models, you just really fell in love with them, right? Yeah, I think the sculpts are really cool. They're similar to something like Dwarves from Blood Bowl, which I really love, um, but they bring a bit of a unique flavour to 40k that isn't just another group of Space Marines. Yeah, sure. So what would you say your favourite of the new models is? I love the new bikes, um, which I know are part of this kit, and the Sagittur. Sagittur, yep. Sagittur. Uh, they have a sort of chunky bubble vibe, which is kind of like an old school sci-fi, but with a bit of a modern twist. And I just think it's with a really right blend of nostalgic with modern design. Awesome. Well, hopefully some more of these will crop up in future videos. But for today, we are painting some Hearthkin Warriors, the everyday troopers of the Leagues of Votan. We started building the models with Meg deciding the loadout, pistols and axes and a shiny chrome dome for the helmet. Overall, I think it's really great to be able to have um, all the different options for the troops. I just think maybe the instru instructions layout was a little bit confusing for me. Yeah, and there are a lot of different choices I think you can have, particularly for a basic troops choice. Yeah, particularly heads. Like There's loads of yeah, head yeah. options, which is really great. Once you have actually decided what you want on the models, they are pretty easy to build once you've got the right bits, and there's a good amount of flexibility as well. Next, the models were primed white to just help the colours really pop as we are going to be going for a very particular paint scheme. So I decided that the new squat army is going to be painted up as the Urani Surta? Yep, Urani Surta. Uh, which is kind of a gruff utilitarian scheme, which is, I think is exactly as it should be for Space Dwarves. Yep. Um, I also really like the green on green colour scheme. I think it works really well. Yeah, it's a bit different, isn't it, to what you might normally see. You don't normally get sort of two colours of green right next to each other. Yeah, plus I think um, I always loved your salamander that you did yep. previously, and I think the green there was a really nice, like, deep green, so I wanted to kind of bring that element into it as well. Yeah, absolutely. So as Meg mentioned there, I worked on a salamander in a previous video, which you can check out here. Um, and so I was excited to try this out in a bit more of a broader sense on a whole army. So over the white primer, we layered olive green from Vallejo over the armor panels. I've not worked much with Vallejo paints, and for me it was way too thin, it took way too many layers. I'm really used to Citadel paints, and this one just for me was not it. No, not the one. So I will say, giving Vallejo their fair due, these are the airbrush paints that I use, which I normally use through the airbrush, but normally they're okay in terms of layering onto models as well. I will say that this green did take four, five? Five coats. Five coats. Five coats before we got a full coverage, so... And even then, I'd say... <laughs> even then, it was a bit Ooh. patchy at best. Once we'd finally made the armour panels green, we had a bit of a debate as I wanted to highlight up the armour, but Meg eventually won out, opting to go with a more classic base shade highlight approach, and who am I to deny the ancestor core her desires? Was that an old joke? Maybe. <laughs> oh, I've always started painting with doing all the base colours once, so that once you've done the base colours, you can not You can then easily fix. Mm. Whereas I know that you do a different technique, so for me that's too hard. Yeah, for me I like I like to kind of pick a piece, like for example the green armour, and then do everything on the green armour, just because then I know that bit's done, and then I can move on to the next one and kind of use my different colour palettes and like... But then you have to fix up. like three layers of colours. Or you just don't make mistakes. Yeah, easier said <laughs> <laughs> Instead of arguing further over the method, I opted to compromise and do exactly what Meg wants by instead base coating the trousers with Skarsnik green. If you're looking to emulate the colour scheme as book accurate as possible, I would recommend a less saturated green colour for this, but for our purposes this was just right as we get some really poppy greens. Next we went all over the brown leather areas like the belts and the gloves with Rhinox hide and then followed that with a bad and black over the knee pads and boots as well as the areas that were going to turn silver. Speaking of silver, that was the next colour to be blocked in with good old Vallejo gunmetal, rapidly becoming my daily driver for silver paint. Next, we came in and did a few little touch-ups to make sure everything was looking crisp and ready for shades. So we started off shading the green armour, brown leather and any metal with a mix of Noln Oil and black paint. The pot of the new Noln Oil I've got feels a little feeble compared with the old one, so I like to give it a bit more black to really deepen the shadows. On the trousers, we thinned down some Bildhand Green and used this to pin wash into the recesses. For me, this method is better than an all-over wash as it tends to avoid leaving patches and gives you a bit more control over your final colour. Next was a bit of a struggle with paint. We went to make a mix of olive green and yellow for edge highlights, but again the Vallejo air paints are very thin, making this difficult. 
yeah i was not a fan of that as a highlight i think it was also a bit too light for me the contrast was a bit too heavy initially um so i switched over to a similar color from citadel which was caliban green and ural yellow uh which made edge highlighting for me a lot easier now, because I'm as stubborn as a kin warrior, I struggled on with the Vallejo paint. And in the end, while we both used a different method, right, the sets of edge highlights still look pretty consistent. I had to come back in and do a few glazes of the original olive green. Um, did you end up doing that on yours in the end? Yeah, I did. I did it in some places, not in everywhere. So I'd done a slightly darker mix of um, the Citadel paints. And then I did do um, that lighter wash in some areas. Sure. But just as like real tip edge highlights. We next highlighted all the brown leather with a 50-50 mix of Rhinox Hide and Scrag Brown, and then a more selective highlight with Scrag Brown on its own. We highlighted the black areas with a medium grey, being careful not to go into any recesses, and then a more selective highlight with light grey. Now, unfortunately, at this point, Meg did have to retire from the paint job, though she managed to get most of it done. In, fol in true Meg fashion, she managed to get about 80% of a model done in a single session. Yeah, it is a bit of a meme. It's a bit of a meme. Yeah, that she... I never finished a model to yeah. full complete, yeah, so I had to it. continue with the trend. <laughs> um, but for the chrome head, I moved on and soldiered through to finish off my Hearthkin Warrior. Uh, I painted it gunmetal and then Vallejo chrome, and then I glazed over this with a light blue. My idea was to reflect the sky, but if I'm honest, I'm not 100% happy yet. I'll need to look into some alternative methods. If you have any good resources for painting reflective surfaces, let me know in the comments down below. For the axe, I used a similar method to the Chaos Lord that I painted a couple of videos ago, using a brown red, red, and then yellow wet blending to get a fiery glow. I then edge highlighted with Flash Git Yellow, avoiding the Vallejo Air Paint's curse of being too thin for edge highlights. The very last thing I did was a red lens in his chest. I painted this chrome first and then glazed over it with red. For basing, we had a bit of a chat about it and I decided these guys are setting off into an alien world, taking of the first pioneering steps into the unknown. When thinking alien, purple vegetation and surface liquid come to mind, so I tasked Ollie with sorting out a pop of purple on a dark base. For this, I took some old army painter tufts and applied various purple shades through the airbrush. I added these to a base covered in Agaros dunes, which I'd painted black and various brown shades. And with that, our Hearthkin warriors are ready to do battle in the name of the ancestors. so much for watching this video and be sure to leave a comment below to let us know how you're painting up your leagues of Votan. Also, be sure to subscribe if you have enjoyed it. And until next time, my name has been Ollie, this has been my hobby, and I'll see you next time.